I am currently reading George S. Klassen's The Richest Man in Babylon, a book that I'm thoroughly enjoying and one in which I would love to discuss further in a future episode of CoinCast. Written in 1926, The Richest Man in Babylon is a financial self-help book indicative of the time in which it was written. It provides financial advice and wisdom aimed at allowing individuals to reclaim their household finances in the form of parables set in ancient Babylon. One of my favorite sections of the book is that which describes the five laws of gold. These five laws are simple in their terms, yet powerful in what they can provide those who abide by them. However, I could not help but analyze the five laws of gold within the current age, 90 years after The Richest Man in Babylon has been written, which is defined by the present inflationary fiscal and monetary policies deployed by governments and central banks. In this video, I will discuss how this inflationary fiscal and monetary environment has destroyed The Richest Man in Babylon's first law of gold, and with it, the remaining four laws, which are predicated on the success of the first law. Sadly, as will be seen, this destruction of the first law of gold has resulted in tremendous difficulty for the personal and household finances of those who live with these inflationary policies. The first law of gold states, Gold cometh gladly and in increasing quantity to any man who will put not less than one-tenth of his earnings to create an estate for his future and that of his family. Simply stated, the first law of gold states that financial success requires individuals to save 10% of their gross earnings. Although seemingly simple, the beauty of this first law is that it implies the need to undertake a number of important steps necessary for financial success. For example, in order to save 10% of gross earnings, individuals will need to compile their expenses and incomes to determine how they will achieve their 10% savings rate. If expenses need to be cut, individuals can then determine where the cuts can reasonably be made. If income needs to be raised, the individual can go about determining how best to increase the money they earn. Therefore, the simple law requiring 10% of gross earnings to be saved necessitates a number of small tasks that are invaluable for successful personal finance. However, the current inflationary fiscal and monetary environment deployed by most, if not all, Western governments and central banks decimates the simplicity of the first law of gold and mutates it into an ever-increasingly difficult law to aspire to. Firstly, by inflationary fiscal and monetary environment, I mean policies that promote inflation, defined as an increase in the money supply. For example, low interest rates, deficit spending, and money printing. Taking Canada and the United States as examples, M2, which is the total money stock or money supply in existence in these countries, has ballooned in recent years, increasing at rates of greater degree than previously seen. These inflationary fiscal and monetary policies have made the first law of gold, that is, saving a mere 10% of gross earnings, increasingly difficult as real wages fail to keep pace with prices. The lower and middle classes are never the first ones to receive the new money created by inflation. The benefits, therefore, accrue to the government and to the rich, particularly those allied with the government in the business world, banking sector, and stock market, who are the first to spend the newly created money. Spending the newly created money within society causes a rise in prices, as there is now more money chasing the same amount of goods which then must be paid by the middle class and the poor. Wages lag these resulting price increases, thereby lowering the purchasing power and standard of living of these classes. The outpacing of prices in relation to wages is currently present in a number of areas of the economy. Headlines inform us that housing prices are outpacing wage growth by as much as 13 times in the United States while housing price increases are causing some Canadians to struggle in paying their bills and having to turn to their credit cards and retirement funds to make ends meet. Further, the increase in food prices, fueled by inflation, are causing lower income individuals to have to devote more of their earnings to feeding themselves. As one recent study has demonstrated, the median annual earnings of all working American men, when adjusted for inflation, has actually decreased since 1964. 
That is, their standard of living has actually gone down during this period. As one commentator has declared, the current inflationary policies deployed by the Canadian government is destroying the middle class. The result that all of this has on the first law of gold should be evident. As the prices for food, housing, and other goods and services increase faster than wages, the ability of many individuals to devote 10% of their gross earnings to savings becomes increasingly difficult. As the cost of living increases, earnings get stretched, and the ability of individuals to deploy earnings towards savings is diminished. Those facing increased food, housing, and energy prices, thereby struggling to get by, can only shrug at the suggestion that they should aim to send 10% of their gross earnings. As will be seen shortly, it wasn't always like this, as the first law of gold did demonstrate remarkable wisdom. But the current inflationary fiscal and monetary environment is not just destroying the first law of gold by making it more difficult to save 10% of gross earnings in the face of increasing prices and lagging wages. This inflationary environment is also providing a disincentive to saving and incentivizing spending through credit and debt. This is the result of the record low interest rates that make up an important policy in the present inflationary fiscal and monetary environment. The wisdom of the first law of gold is in deferring present consumption for increased future consumption. However, low interest rates which are correlated with low savings rates in both the United States and Canada, disincentivizes individuals to save money, as their savings fail to keep pace with inflation. More importantly, these low interest rates allow these same individuals to borrow cheaply, thereby driving their insatiable demand for money and credit to meet their never-ending present wants and needs. And can you really blame these individuals? Who would find it to their advantage to put away 10% of their hard-earned income into a savings account, only to then watch it being eaten away by inflation, while then also giving up the ability to live above their means on the back of cheap credit? With low interest rates allowing individuals to more easily carry their debts forward, there is no reason to defer present consumption for future consumption. You can consume all you want, right now. This combination of saving being disincentivized while incentivizing debt has caused debt levels to explode in a way that is unprecedented. Fueled by low interest rates, Canadians and Americans are taking on debt at levels that has never been seen before. Individuals are taking on more mortgage debt, credit card debt, student debt, and car debt, as low interest rates make these debt payments more manageable, for now while providing little reason to save. The wisdom underlying the first law of gold, which again was to save 10% of gross earnings, was abundantly clear in the century preceding Classen's writing of The Richest Man in Babylon. It provided excellent results to those who deployed the strategy when the gold standard and sound fiscal and monetary policies stood in the place where the modern inflationary policies are now. One only has to examine the historical consumer price index provided by the Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank starting in the year 1800 to see why the first law of gold worked during the era of sound money. In the year 1800, the consumer price index annual average was 51, and as we scroll downwards towards 1850, outside of the inflation and resulting price increases that occurred after the War of 1812, when banks were given the power to issue banknotes not backed by gold, we see that the consumer price index was falling during this 50-year period, to the point where the CPI was at 25 in 1850. Stated another way, prices in general were cut in half for Americans between 1800 and 1850 meaning that $100 in 1800 would have had the purchasing power of $200 in 1850. The dollar's purchasing power doubled. Continuing to scroll down towards the year 1900, again we see that outside of the inflation that resulted from the temporary adoption of the greenback in 1862 during the American Civil War, which was again legal tender that was not backed by gold or silver, Prices were relatively stable and trended towards a decline in the consumer price index, to the point where by 1900, the CPI annual average was back to 25, the same level it had been in 1850. 
George S. Classen, who lived through the latter half of the 19th century, would have experienced this price trend himself, and therefore, we may conclude that it is very likely that this influenced his creation of the first law of gold. He would have been well aware that if an individual simply saved 10% of their earnings in 1850, these savings would have kept their purchasing power by 1900. To put this into modern day values for illustrative purposes, $2,000 saved each year from 1850 to 1900 would result in $100,000 by 1900, and this $100,000 would be able to purchase the same amount of goods as could have been purchased in 1850. Start factoring in a small return from safe and simple investments like a savings account or government bonds, and it becomes clear that an individual who saved 10% of their gross earnings every year between 1850 and 1900 would have succeeded in achieving financial freedom in their retirement years. As we have seen, this is a far cry from the situation that the average individual finds themselves in today's inflationary fiscal and monetary environment. Not only would $100 placed into a savings account fail to purchase the same amount of goods 50 years from now, that $100 would purchase significantly less in 50 years. The Consumer Price Index again makes this clear. Scrolling past 1913, we can see the start of a significant and continuous increase in the CPI, as this was the year that the Federal Reserve was enacted, and can be seen as establishing a significant component of the current inflationary fiscal and monetary environment. As we continue scrolling down, we see the continuous rise in the CPI. Focusing on the 50-year period between 1965 and 2015, we see that the Consumer Price Index stood at 94.7 in 1965, and by 2015 had increased to 711.1, a more than seven times increase in the CPI. In remarkable contrast to the period between 1800 and 1850, in which the purchasing power of money doubled, and also the period between 1850 and 1900, in which the purchasing power of the money remained the same, the current inflationary fiscal and monetary policies significantly devalue the purchasing power of an individual's savings. Today, simply putting away 10% of gross earnings just does not have the same effect that it did in the decades prior to The Richest Man in Babylon being written. Sadly, the current inflationary fiscal and monetary policies have not only destroyed the first law of gold illustrated in The Richest Man in Babylon. Classen's remaining four laws of gold, which basically call for sound, diligent, and prudent investing of the 10% that has been saved, have also been destroyed. As has been demonstrated, due to the record low interest rates that would be earned on savings, one cannot simply purchase safe government bonds or place their money in a savings account and end up ahead. Those funds will be greatly diminished through inflation. Rather, Individuals must take on more risky bets and venture into investments in sectors that they know nothing about, do not have the emotional temperament for, or in which they must pay high fees for others, the so-called experts, to work for them when there's no guarantee that they will provide any greater success than the individuals themselves. As was seen with the dot-com bubble and the housing bubble, which as an aside, were both the result of the same inflationary fiscal and monetary policies that have destroyed the five laws of gold, devastatingly negative effects can be brought upon those chasing returns in markets they know nothing about and where they are forced to employ investing strategies that do not correlate with their emotional disposition, thereby allowing fear, greed, and delusion to take hold of the decision-making process with disastrous ends. The goal of this video has not been to argue that it is no longer prudent to engage in saving a portion of one's income for their future. I hope that the opposite has been presented. Rather, the goal of this video is to show how the current inflationary fiscal and monetary policies that are currently being deployed around the world have a negative effect on the action of individuals and greatly affect the financial circumstances of these individuals. I hope that you found this video enjoyable and educational, and I thank you for making it to the end. I would kindly ask that if you enjoyed the video, please think about providing a like or comment, or sharing the video. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon. Bye for now.